We could one day develop machines more capable and more intelligent than ourselves. Machines ultimately able to think for themselves. A whole genre of science fiction and film has been devoted to this theme. But robotics and artificial intelligence are no longer the stuff of dreams. Cars are being tested, robots are being used in factories, care homes, and on the battlefield. And the pace of change is accelerating. My guest today has a title which would have sounded fanciful a generation ago. Paul is a world-renowned professor of robot ethics at the heart of a growing debate about the opportunities and dangers of a world in which humans have developed machines that can operate autonomously and have capacities that threaten to make us redundant. Are the darker visions of science fiction in danger of becoming science fact? Hi, delighted to be here. And, and, you know, I'm kind of a professional worrier there. Actually, it was really getting involved in public engagement, uh, robotics public engagement 15 years ago that, that, if you like, alerted me and sensitized me to the ethical questions about, around robotics and AI. Let's take this phrase, artificial intelligence. It raises an immediate question in my mind, how we define intelligence. Yeah. So I wonder yeah. if you could do that for me. It's really difficult. In fact, one of the fundamental, if you like, philosophical problems with AI is that we don't have a satisfactory definition for natural intelligence. Yeah. So, I mean, here's a simple definition. Uh, it's doing the right thing at the right time. But that's not very helpful from a scientific point of view. I mean, one, one thing that we can say about intelligence is that it's not one thing that we all have more or less of. But it's interesting you uh, liked upon board games so quickly, because in the news over the last few days, we've sure. seen something really quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Google's DeepMind department has okay. this machine, computer, call it what you will, the uh, AlphaGo Zero, I think they call it, which has achieved astounding results playing this game. I'm not familiar with it, but a game known as Go, I think it's primarily played in China, extraordinarily complex, has more computations, more moves in it, more sort of uh, complexity than chess. And this machine is now capable of beating, it seems, any human grandmaster. And the real thing about it is that it's a machine that appears to learn unsupervised. That's right. I, I must admit I'm somewhat baffled by this because I've just asked you about thinking. You say, no, don't use that word. But it seems to me this is a machine that thinks. Well, it's a machine that, that, that does, if you like, a, an artificial analog of thinking. It certainly doesn't do it in the way that you and I do. Um, the, the, the technology is based on what are called artificial neural networks, uh, and they are, if you like, an abstract model of uh, biological networks, neural networks, brains, in other words, which actually we don't understand very well, uh, curiously. But we can still make very simple abstract models, and, and that's what uh, the technology is. But the, the way to think about the, the, the way it learns, and, and it is a remarkable breakthrough, I mean, it's, it's, I don't want to overhype it because it only plays Go, it can't make a cup of tea, you know. <laughs> but, but the very interesting thing is that the earlier generations effectively had to be trained on data that was gleaned from human experts and, and many, many games of Go. It had to be loaded with external information. That's right. And that was what we call supervised learning, whereas the, the new version is doing unsupervised learning. We Actually, technically, we call it reinforcement learning. So the idea is that the machine is, is given nothing else than the, if you like, the game, the, the rules of the game, and, and then it just plays essentially against itself millions and millions of times. It's a bit like a human infant learning um, how to play with building blocks, Lego, entirely on his or her own by just learning over and over again. Because humans don't actually learn like that. Mostly we learn with supervision, with, with, with you know, parents, teachers, brothers, sisters, family, and so on. But it's interesting, you are prepared to use a word like learning. Thinking you don't like learning, you're prepared to uh, apply yes, to a machine. I think it, what I want to get to, that's right, yes. Good. Yes. And what I want to get to, before we go into the specifics of driverless cars and autonomous fighting machines and all that, I still want to stay with big picture stuff. And, and part of the problem, part, part of the reason that it's so difficult is that we don't actually have the design, if you like, the architecture of human 
minds. But in principle, you think we can get it. What I'm driving at yes, really is this principle, philosophical exactly. question of what the brain is. To you, yeah. Professor, is right. the brain, in the end, chemistry? Is it material? Is yes. it a lump of matter? Yes. yes. It, it doesn't have any sort of spiritual or any other intangible thing. It is chemistry. In my view, well, I'm a materialist. Yes, the, the brain is thinking meat. Um, and yeah, but the, that, that, that's a bit of a cop out because it, you've had this sure. thinking meat. It's, yes. it's meat, and the way that meat is arranged means it can think. Exactly. So you could create yes. something artificial, which, if it were as complex and as well arranged as human capacity could make it one day, it could also think. I believe, in principle, yes. I mean, but but the key thing is architecture, and you know, in a sense, um, I mean, the way the way to think about the. You know the current work on artificial intelligence. We have these artificial neural networks, which are almost like, the, if you like, the the building blocks. So it's a bit like having marble. You know, but having just having a, a lot of, of wonderful Italian marble doesn't make, mean you can make a cathedral. You need to have the design. You need to have the architecture and the know-how to build that cathedral. And you have to think of AI as a fundamental game changer for humanity. Mm. It, the, the, you could be the last invention that human intelligence ever needs to make, he says, because it's, it's the beginning of a completely new era, the machine intelligence era. And in a sense, he says, we're a bit like children, sort of playing with a, something that we've picked up, and it happens to be an unexploded bomb, and we don't even know the consequences yeah. that could come with it. Do, yeah. do you share that? I, I partially share it. So, so you know, where I disagree with Nick is that I, I don't think we're under threat from a kind of runaway superintelligence, which is, you know, the, the thesis of his book of that super type, intelligence. superintelligence. However, I do think that we need to be ever so careful. And in a way, I mean, I, I alluded to this earlier, we don't actually understand what natural intelligence is. In fact, we have no general scientific theory of intelligence. So. And trying to build artificial general intelligence is a little bit like trying to do, you know, particle physics at CERN without any theory, without any underlying scientific theory. So, you know, it seems to me that we need both some serious theory, which we don't have yet. We have some, but it, it's, it, it doesn't, it's not unified. There isn't a single uh, kind of theory, like, if you like, like the standard, you know, model in, in physics. And we also need to do responsible research and innovation. In other words, we need to, to, to innovate ethically. Right. But that's not going to happen, is it? Well, it may. And, and did, did you see what Vladimir Putin said? He said, you know, yeah. artificial intelligence is the future for Russia, for all of humankind. And this is the key bit. Whoever becomes the leader in this sphere will be...